Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI and my typical disclaimer, as I say in all my Luminar AI videos to date is, yes, you know, it's in beta, which means things may change. The product that I have today may look somewhat different at launch, which is getting pretty close. I think it's going to be mid to late December. I don't, I don't really know. They just kind of said holiday season. So I'm hoping for mid-December. Um, we'll find out. But I'm in beta, and I've been out shooting. I'm testing out uh, a new product and I'm working on a review video. And as part of that, I've been out shooting some. So I went out last weekend, and I went out again tonight and had a nice little sunset. So I've been shooting some long exposures, and I came back, and I'm trying to edit some photos for that uh, review video. And I realized I was kind of doing some things kind of quickly. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a video showing you kind of how I did a couple of quick speed edits in Luminar AI and just took advantage of uh, the power and the flexibility of Luminar AI to get that done. So here's my first photo. I have done nothing to it other than moved over to the edit module. And the first thing I want to do is go to composition AI. And all I'm going to do is just pull that in a little bit and something about like that. I'm going to hit enter and that applies my crop. I'm going to go into the light tool. I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast, put on the highlights a little bit. I was shooting straight into the sun, as you can tell. So of course, that is going to be blown out. I'm not going to be able to recover that. And that's okay. To me, it looks natural. You can see the sun rays kind of coming out. And because it's a long exposure, you got those streaking clouds, which personally, I think look pretty awesome. I'm going to do some accent AI, because I really want to brighten up that foreground to get a little bit more life in the photo. And I think already we've made a, a nice difference. I'm going to do something I typically do with um, water or skies, and that is I take structure and go negative, but I'm going to apply a mask, which is a gradient mask, and I'm just going to drop that here into the sky so that that mask applies across the entire sky. And that's done now, so I've softened up that sky, even though it was already kind of soft because it was a long exposure. And of course, now that I have the mask applied, if I wanted to, I could soften it up even more like that, which actually looks kind of cool. It looks a little bit more dreamy, but I'm going to go back to, I think I was in the 30s. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. Now I'm going to pop over to color and I want to add a little bit of vibrance. So maybe, you know, 20 or so and maybe a tiny bit of saturation, although I tend to be a little careful with saturation because I don't want to overdo it. And the difference is that vibrance will bump up the non-dominant colors, which I think gives the image some nice balance, whereas saturation will kind of just bump everything up, which can make it really look over the top. This already may be slightly over the top for your taste. That's okay. We're friends here. I'm just kind of having fun. Um, and honestly, speed editing for me is really just a demo of the power and the flexibility of the tool. It's not a recommendation. I'm not saying, hey, you really got to hurry up and get through this as fast as possible because you got to do something, whatever it is that my hand's pointing at, you got something you got to do. That's not really what I'm saying with the speed edit. I'm just kind of showing off the tool. And there we go. I mean, I think in just a couple of minutes, especially if I wasn't yapping here with you, I went from a really dark image to one that's much more bright and more vibrant. The colors have come to life and I think it looks pretty awesome. Now, there may be some other things I would do. I might would go back into the light tool and play a little bit more with temperature. I actually might cool it off a little bit, maybe give it a tiny bit of tint. I just want to be careful. I don't want to get too much of that tint in the road, but actually I'm going to go back to golden hour and maybe give that a tiny bit more just to give that a little bit more pop there. But like I said, I mean, just a couple of minutes, we went from that to that. And if I do this sliding window, you can see we had a nice little impact on the photo in really no time at all. So now I'm going to go back to catalog and I'm going to get this hill country and I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to find a photo. Uh, let's see. These were, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to find the a right photo. How about this one? We'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click edit, pop into the edit module and you can see the tools moving pretty fast. Uh, once again, I'm going to do composition AI, but this time I'm going to do a 16 by nine and I'm going to go like that and I'm going to hit enter. And that's applied the crops. Now I'm going to get the erase tool because this pesky little spot right here in the center is kind of driving me nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over that a little bit. And I see one there as well. And now I'm just going to hit erase to get those out of here. And there we go. So now into the light tool and to do some quick editing. This is a kind of photo where I feel like you don't really need to do a lot of editing. Obviously, that's personal choice. You can do whatever you like. But um, Photos like this, to me, don't feel like they need a whole lot of editing. It's a fairly simple nature image, and my opinion is I want to keep nature kind of looking, you know, pretty much the way it looks. 
So I'm just kind of brightening some things up. I'm gonna go into color here. And while I'm gonna give it a little bit of vibrance, I am gonna take the blue saturation down. So HSL, you've got the hue, saturation, and luminance. It was already on saturation, so, not cyan. I'm gonna take the blue and pull that down a little bit because I don't want that water looking too blue. And you will notice while I'm messing with the tool that the spots are showing back up. I don't know if that's just because it's in beta or because uh, of something else, but just FYI, but they're disappearing again once I've uh, finished messing with the tool. Uh, actually, I skip structure. I'm gonna go back up. In this case, I'm actually gonna add some structure because I like what it does to add a little bit more texture to the waterfall, and I think that looks nice. I might give it a tiny little bump of golden hour just because there are a little bit of warm tones in that rock where the sun's hitting it because this image is kind of part shade, part sun, and then I'm gonna hit it with a vignette as well. And with my vignettes, I tend to do less on the roundness, uh, high on the feathering, and depending on the photo, maybe a little bit of inner light. I am gonna give this a little bit of inner light because I'm really kind of brightening up some of that foreground area. And I think that's looking pretty good. That's pretty much my edit. So let me show you the before and after. Of course, this doesn't include the crop, but that's before and that's after. So the sliding window, you can see here, there we go, before and after. Not a massive difference, but again, you don't always have to do a whole significant amount of change to have a big impact on the photo. Simple things like contrast and structure and moving some of the light values around, which would be highlights and shadows, uh, contrast itself, um, and also AI enhance. They just go along, or gosh, no, it's Accent AI now. I gotta get that right. Accent AI, they go a long way to making the photo look different, right? So there it is before Accent AI. A bit darker, you know, obviously shadows, things like that, and there it is after. It's definitely brought that up for me. So. That's a quick two photo edit, uh, kind of a speed edit. Again, it's not about hurrying. I'm just kind of showing off how the product works. If you already use Luminar 4, you're gonna find the workflow to be very familiar. I mean, there are new things. There's a new engine underneath it. I don't know if you can tell, but the tool is running a bit more rapidly, in my opinion, than it did in Luminar 4. I was also editing in Luminar 4 tonight, and I haven't been in 4 that much because I've been using Luminar AI. And um, I was kind of like, golly, it's just it's it's a bit slower than Luminar AI. Um, just Luminar AI is moving really quick for me. So we'll see. They're still going to fine tune some things and all that, but um, hopefully it's coming soon. So stay tuned. I'll continue to post some videos here, but I wanted to walk through and just show you a couple of examples of how you can quickly edit photos and move on and move through them. I didn't even get into templates, but I've done that in other videos. So I think you have an idea about that. And I'll be back soon with more, my friends, about Luminar AI and other products. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for updates, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care of yourselves out there, and adios.